a pike, an axe, and the famous halligan. All tools you use when fighting fires, but the one tool that can help us truly see the heat is the tick. Thermal imaging cameras. It can save your life. I'm Grant Coffey, and it's our topic today on Flare Primed. You know, we've seen the first arriving apparatus pull up, break out their tick, but what if everyone walking into that burning building was trained and equipped with a tick? Well, today I'm here with Jeff Pritcher, Division Chief and Fire Marshal here in Scappoose, Oregon. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Grant. First question I have, have you ever used a tick in an emergency situation? Can you describe a little bit about that? Absolutely. There's been a, a couple of times where ticks have really made a huge difference in how we've been able to affect rescues and also see what's going on in the fire environment. The one that comes to mind was a situation where we were doing a search and rescue for an individual and uh, it was the heat signature that allowed us to see them uh, in a field of snow. Tell us a little bit about what happens when an alarm goes off. What's, what's the process there? For us here at Columbia River and, uh, and Scappoose Fire, uh, our, our goal is to try and have at least one thermal imaging camera on every rig. But like most agencies, cost kind of puts a cap on the amount that we have. Ultimately, we'd like to have one for every firefighter. But our standard operating procedure is when we roll up on the scene, the, the company officer on that first uh, arriving engine uh, has that unit with them as they're going in to effect a rescue or to try and see the fire environment, which in most cases, you can't see much with, when the smoke layer is going down to about two feet off the floor. So take us a little, let's drill down just a little bit on a typical fire scene. How do you use it tactically? What, do you have that all planned out? Is there a certain procedure you use, a certain sequence of events that you use with the tactics on the tick? Well, I think the first procedure that we use is to try and locate the seat of the fire, if that's our, our main objective. If our main objective is search and rescue, then we're rapidly searching every room in the house until we come across uh, what would look to be a person or an animal um, or worst case scenario, another firefighter that we may need to go rescue. Uh, but in all cases, we, uh, we use the tool, the thermal imaging camera, uh, to see in areas where we can't see, meaning when the entire room or building is full of smoke. What are the tactics uh, and how would you use the ticks and how are your people trained for that? Kind of give me a little picture about what special training do they need, what are your procedures, on, on a typical response like that. Oh, that's a good question. So first of all, with our firefighters, uh, when they get their basic or entry level training, we, we teach everybody how to use this tool because it is a very important and wonderful tool that will save time and allow us to affect rescues a lot, uh, a lot quicker. Um, the, the training is involved with using different temperature liquids, uh, different environments, whether it be dark, fake smoke, um, but all of that is geared towards making sure that uh, regardless of who's on scene, everybody knows how to use this piece of equipment. Now, when we arrive on scene, there's generally two modes that we get into. One is either the rescue mode, and that's where we're looking for somebody who may not have been able to get out of, of the house, or for uh, the firefighters that are involved in rapid intervention companies, they would use the tool to locate another down firefighter. And as you know, our primary focus is always life safety. Once that's out of the picture, then we get into the firefighting mode. And the thermal imager in a structure fire is a great tool because it allows us to see through smoke. And most of the time when we get in there, uh, with all the gear that we've got on, we can't see anything because the smoke is down to probably two feet, sometimes even lower. Uh, with it being really thick and black, we, we have to have that tool so we can see the fire, we can see the environment, uh, and we can do our job better. We know in the, in the business that structure fires are very important, but probably a smaller portion of all the calls that we have. And I know from this area that you're on a river, you're outside of Portland, you've got a rail yard right out front here, and you're probably an hour to two hours from a hazmat response from a state hazmat team. What does that mean to you uh, to have a tick and that tool for other than structure fires? What can you use it for? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, one of the things that's really beneficial about a tool like this, and I'll start with water, because we do have an incredible amount of water with the Columbia River that runs through our, both our districts. The, uh, the, the amount of marine calls we get 
uh, generally have somebody in the water. And whether it be at nighttime or during the daytime, it's really hard to see people as they're just floating on the surface of the water. So holding up one of these devices allows us to see the heat on that cool surface of water and allows us to get there a lot quicker, or at least see them so we know where to go. With respect to the hazmat that you talked about, we do have a significant amount of hazardous materials going through our corridor in our county. Uh, we're one of the few counties that does have the uh, crude oil come up and down our rail lines. And if there was an accident, one of the first things our company officers or chief officers or firefighter, whoever has the device, they're gonna be holding it up to see how much liquid is in the container. Chief, that, that's, that's uh, evident that you can use it for a lot of things. And we talked a little bit hazmat, river. Uh, are there anything else that you can think about uh, in, in uh, inclement weather, uh, uh, any types of first aid calls or something that we haven't talked about yet? Yeah, actually, uh, one of the significant things that we can do with this device um, is if we know about a motor vehicle crash and it happens to be on a corner and we arrive, we can't really see anything. If we get the thermal imaging camera out quick enough, sometimes we can still see the skid marks on the road of where a vehicle may have left the roadway and we know where to go look for them. Uh, in the summer season, one of the things we can do during the daytime but a lot easier at night is use the thermal imaging camera to find hot spots on wildland fires, which is really important because the last thing we want is a rekindle. So Chief, I want to I want to focus in a little bit, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about a call that I was on here in your area, and this was a couple years ago, but we had about a 12 car alcohol derailment where we actually used the tick. Can you tell our audience a little bit about what we would use it for when we have full and sometimes empty uh, rail cars that are derailed with fire underneath them. What does that tell us? Well, kind of like what you were talking about in one of the other episodes, uh, is that using the thermal imager will allow us to see how much liquid is in a container. And it's really important to understand how much liquid is in the container, uh, especially if that container is pressurized or not pressurized. Also, knowing how much liquid is in that container or getting a general idea will kind of prompt us as to what we need to do for the future when we're working with our other interagency partners, specifically you know, the EPA or um, uh, people who are gonna be responsible for the spill and the cleanup. If a vessel becomes impinged upon by fire, there's a good chance that it's going to lose part of its load and we need to know how much, uh, how much product is gonna be uh, uh, lost. Hey, thanks a bunch, Chief. I appreciate your time today. I really appreciate your involvement, your information. Head to flircom slash primed to check out our other videos and download some great classroom materials. We'll see you again next time on Flare Primed.